I'm back at my B-Link ThinT 9 front terminal to explain the hows and whys behind the graphical interface of Plan 9 systems. The Plan 9 operating system was first released in the 1990s. By this point, networking, affordable desktop computers, graphical interfaces with Windows and mice and all that uh, were seen as commonplace and the way things would continue to go. Uh, so Plan 9 was designed from the start with the idea that there'd be a computer at your desk with a monitor and a mouse and a keyboard and they would be part of a network of computers. So while Unix systems only inherently deal in teletypes or VT100-like text interfaces, uh, Plan 9 has had mouse and graphics built in uh, right into the kernel. The program that manages the graphical interface is called Rio. Uh, it was named such because it was developed with a project that was codenamed Brazil. Uh, section 1 of the man page explains how to run and use the interface. And uh, section 4, uh, Rio, that explains the file system part of it. So the kernel abstracts the keyboard, mouse, and graphics as files. Rio reads and writes to those, and then presents its own layer of files that the programs running in Windows interact with. So like so many things on Plan 9, it is a kind of file system. Let's see, WSYS. So Rio's file system gets bound into slash dev and can be read as directories and files. So here we can see it has two entries right now, one and seven. If I make another window, I could see it made another directory for it. So if I change to that directory, you can see that it is full of files. And I can read these files just using cat. So reading that one gives me the coordinates of that file there, or that window there. And if you notice the uh, little terminal prompt didn't come back because it's still reading it. So if I do something like um, make that window now current instead of not current or change its size, now the, uh, the stats on it change. Rio is often described as a multiplexer. Again, it takes the monitor, mouse, and keyboard and shares them between different processes. And those processes only see the part of the monitor, mouse, and keyboard they are using. So this window here has a mouse file associated with it. If I read that mouse file, I don't see anything until I go and use this window. And now the mouse data is being moved around in it. As soon as the mouse goes out, it's not seeing it anymore. Since Rio is just a multiplexer, Rio doesn't mind running inside of Rio. So I can open a new window, run Rio inside of it, open up new windows, So this is really handy for segregating work. You can kind of use it sort of like you use virtual desktops. I can open a bunch of stuff in here and you know, for some related projects, when I'm done using it, I can hide it. If I want to use it again, I can bring it back and so on. Since uh, Windows and Rio sort of inherent the uh, original namespace um, by default. Uh, you can open one and uh, give it a different namespace. So um, I could go do the uh, thing where I import the outside facing network again. So I'm gonna import from my file server. Still haven't come up with a better way of doing this. So I'm doing it uh, sort of uh, ugly way, let's see, yep, there it is. I'm going to mount 
n slash net one over my net. And this will let me ping out. That's fine and all. And if I run Rio in here, so again, this Rio is running on the uh, the thin T here. So if I do stats, it's still running on the the uh, terminal. I can open up a window in Google again. Run another window. Uh, ping, uh, let's ping Microsoft this time. So I can open this up and say this be my whole window for running outside networking stuff. I can go ahead and get it out of the way when I don't want to look at it. So, you know, and Rio doesn't really care, um, you know, where these mouse and keyboard and monitor files are. As long as it can find them, it can use them. So I can do something like connect to the CPU on the file server. You can see my little prompt change. So anything running in this window now isn't going to actually be running on the uh, on the terminal. It's going to be running on the file server and just sent back. And I can run Rio in here too. So this time if I open up the little stats program, this time it's seeing central with its four cores rather than the thin T with its two cores. So that is why Rio functions the way it does underneath. And Rio also has a particular way of being on the surface. The folks at Bell Labs want a system to do work on. And to that end, they wanted it to be non-distracting and uncluttered. Um, by default, when you fire it up, it's just an empty gray space. Uh, there's no icons on the desktop, no decorations on the windows. Uh, they found a study on the colors that were easiest on the human eye. And going with those colors, everything sort of has these kind of muted, um, you know, sort of pastel colors. So that's the way, the reason it looks the way it does. Um, oops, didn't mean to do that. New feature added to uh, Nine Front lately. They added an exit feature, which is easy to hit sometimes. Uh, another thing that they um, did because uh, it was the high technology at the time was the three button mouse. So the way that works, so you go back to a man page here. Oops, man one Rio. Uh, the first mountain but mouse button will do, you know, selecting. The middle one tends to have things like. Snarf, which is copy, you know, paste, cut, plum, uh, which uh, sort of has a system behind it to run programs for different things. And uh, you can turn scrolling off and on. And then the third mouse button would be the one on the far right. Um, as new, resize, none, delete, hide, and now exit, of course. Um, some people complain about this, but uh, any, you know, any modern mouse with a wheel, the, the wheel clicks and that counts as your middle mouse button. It's mostly a problem for like laptops that might only have like two buttons built onto the touchpad. Uh, in that case, you can hold down shift and that sort of emulates the third button. Uh, Rio tends to generate a lot of uh, strong opinions. Some people love the minimalism and think it's uh, perfect the way it is. Uh, others dig into it and they change the colors and add background images and so on. Um, the strength of Rio is that's just a window multiplexer. So, you know, all this just is being done through a file interface. Um, the eye candy or lack thereof is actually just purely optional. If you go look at the code for it, well, that would be under um, this source. 
command Rio. The word count see, by line. So Rio is a bit over 6,000 lines of code. So by today's standards, there's plenty of room to add more if you're so inclined. And as always, have fun.